I just I just go down here because it's. I took a shortcut, but uh, we're. It's a question of age. Oh. I was hoping you would bring that up. That was my first question. Uh, you paid me. I said it. <laughs> I know. It's real uh, bribery happening here. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing the film with us. Um, I know you're very excited for this Q&A. <laughs> so I'm going to begin with um, maybe an evident but I think important question. Why, why these three countries? Why Palestine, France, and, uh, and the United States? Um, it actually the answer is is quite simple. I lived in the three of them, so I'm familiar with the three of them, and I'm not. I mean, I'm. You know, if I had done a to do a film in a in a country you did not have a familiarity with, risks uh, quite a lot of becoming uh, a tourist filmmaker. You know. And uh, I actually was quite worried that even with my familiarity with these three places that the audience, the spectator might um, not like feel one country more intense than another and the imbalance might surface. And in this case, you know, there will be like a preference to say, okay, I mean, I prefer if cinematically you'd say, I, you know, this, when you have a film with different parts, the risk is that and that risk exists even with me because I have a preferred part in this film, but there is this risk that, you know, they would say, oh, the third part had fallen apart or something. Of course it did not, right? <laughs> I told you my brother is here. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a quite a lot of Palestinian community, so. Uh, uh, so I actually watched a few films also that got me onto that, uh, um, basically, caution uh, f films that of filmmakers that may have gone to a certain country and got sort of fascinated by its visual angle, and immediately got the enthusiasm to go and write a part in that country, etc. And that for me was not at all an an option. I have done a short film um, in Cuba as part of a uh, seven short films called Seven Days in Havana. And, uh, and I have to say in the beginning, I don't know, I didn't know Cuba and I didn't know the lang I don't know the language. And I'm not familiar with that place at all. And uh, I took another path uh, in order to, I mean, in the beginning, I even refused to do the film. I was, it was a commission and I said, I don't know this place. You know, I was really scared to, to fail. <clears throat> but I took another path, which is rather than coming close and have the presumption of familiarity, I took the camera uh, more distance, in, you know, so that I preserve the integrity of the place without, you know, me um, imposing any kind of subjectivity on the place. But in these three places, I can say um, I was quite familiar with them, uh, and you you know i lived in all of them and i i think there there was an in, like an intention to actually um present the three ambiences with their three different kinds of humor and uh, even with my sort of awkward uh character even changing a little bit from one place to another i'd love to talk about the last scene and you know, your character is distant and removed and almost Buster Keaton-like throughout, but there's something that appears in his expression at the end in the club. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about why we, you wanted to end on, on that note? Um, is there another film after this one? <laughs> Probably. Be succinct-ish. And, and you think they have nothing better to do with these people? They're yeah. staying. What do you want me to do? You want me to tell them to leave? Like <laughs> <laughs> I would have. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, <coughs> it's interesting. The question is interesting. That's why I'm being, you know, mocking. I'm trying to use time to think about how to answer it. I did my job. <laughs> um, actually, um, I have to say that uh, this is a, a, 
an interesting scene and how it became the end scene. Um, it was not in the script. And uh, when I went to shoot in, in Nazareth, well, something quite um, interesting started to happen to me. And it's, you, you can relate to what I'm going to tell you because some of this stuff is actually in the film itself. But, you know, all through the, the so many years of living nomadically and with choosing, you know, and choosing, like self-exiling, I was not forced. Um, I was after with an ambition, after becoming this perfect stranger that we heard about in the film. And conceptually, intellectually, uh, I really uh, was working for so many years uh, to rid myself of uh, any form of nationalism which I can tell you, uh, I do think I am cleansed of this uh, part. However, um, I return to Nazareth to shoot the film and something starts to, an emotion, a sentiment uh, start to surface, which was confusing in the beginning um, because I, I I I thought that I could equally, you know, become, um, you know, love every place like if it was my home, wherever that would be. Partially true and partially lived and experienced. So doubts uh, start uh, when I arrived in Nazareth and there's an emotion that starts to build up. Um, I think it might have to do also, also, not only, with the current political situation and uh, and the, the the new form of uh, despair that is actually also is being experienced by Palestinians at the moment, um, you, you always think that there's a bottom to to oppression and occupation and suffering, but you always are quite surprised to find that there's a deeper level to let's say sadistic practices. And uh, and you can feel it now quite strongly. It might have to do a little bit with that. The this uh, let's call it this this Palestinianism that I started to reconnect with uh, in an in a sentimental and uh, in a fashion of belonging, um, not in a conceptual way, but in an emotional. Uh, in an emotional way, and and then I I started to be attached uh, unwillingly uh, to unwillingly attached again, you know, um, to to the original homeland. Let's put it that way. And then uh, and and Nazareth has become like more severely ghettoized uh, than ever before. So it's become violent, drug infested, and um, quite a claustrophobic space because it's been over constructed due to land annexations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then I'm, I'm told about um, uh, Haifa being like s completely different in in mood. So you get a little bit frustrated and a little despaired from the from the ambience in Nazareth, but and so there's more sympathy and identification and solidarity. Let's put it in those words too. And then I am told that there's a new scene in Haifa, which I haven't been to for a long time. So uh, during the weekends uh, of the shooting, uh, they escort me to Haifa. And there is where I uh, found um, these guys that you saw in the last scene. And I, I asked him to take me around. This is this like become like a hub for very young generations who are like, very passionate uh, and activist and uh, energetic and uh, beautiful and and feeling free and feeling at liberty and they start to exercise some form of resistance that's basically non aligned to any political party but it's aligned to cultural expression and so they're basically let's put it in more s uh, slang they're 
partying and having a lot of sex and drugs. <laughs> and not exactly. Um, but it was nice to watch. So, <laughs> not participate. <laughs> I'm a married man. Uh, and uh, and they're like my grandchildren. <laughs> At, uh, and anyway, so they take me around the bars and I start to get more and more pissed, I mean drunk, and, uh, and loving it, and it was really lively, and at, uh, even at three o'clock at night, uh, there was still one bar to, to be, uh, uh, you know, visited, and, and they told me, there, would you like to visit as a Palestinian gay and lesbian bar? And I said, you know, how can you miss on that one? So I said, take me there. And they take me there, and this is exactly the one that I, f that you know, you have in the film. So I enter, and uh, and there's this bunch of people, not exactly you know the same people, but you know this kind of people, and they were just having the time of their lives. And there, I felt that that despair and and frustration that I was feeling, you know, in Nazareth was now released and reignited and transformed in some kind of hope. And uh, as, as if, you know, you are taking into a ride, you know, to destiny, you know, because the, the feeling that I had at this moment was like when, you've, when you find in a script the end scene of a film, I found not only the end scene of the film, I found also myself uh, in that scene. So it was interesting for me to also, you know, come out with this sort of happy ending. And so it was sync in reality and in the cinematic uh, translation of the film. Uh, did you understand what I said? No, no. <laughs> no, for saying you didn't want to do this Q&A, you're quite good at it. So. I, didn't, I didn't say I wasn't going to do the Q&A, but but I thought I maybe like, you know, blackmail you or something. <laughs> um, uh, I do want to open it up to the audience for a few questions as we do have some time. Uh, please, ra please raise your hand nice and high. I will also repeat the question for the benefit of people who might not have heard. Um, all the way in the back. Yeah. So the question is in regards to the, the character you tend to play, which is um, much more passive, and though you're playing a version of yourself, as we see here, it's not quite the same, and how you create that distinction and, and why you have that distinction. It wasn't the way she said it. She said it oh, as if... That was a long... I was she, trying to she, summarize it. She said it like if it was redundancy. She said that you keep on doing the same thing, more or less. I don't think that's what it was. And that's what she said. She said, you keep on doing the same thing over and over again. Isn't why? that what you said? No, she's, why do you keep <laughs> returning to this theme in order to explore it? Okay, and what can you develop from it? Fine. Right? Uh, you, you want another character? I mean, I can cast someone else. In fact, it's about time this happens. Uh, um, it would be funny if I tell you now I didn't understand the question. <laughs> I kind of didn't, actually. Um, I mean, uh, first of all, I don't think you can disconnect the, the, the cinematic language from the inclusion of the director as actor in my films. It's just not possible to do otherwise. The whole um, ensemble is what this particular language seems to me like it should be. In other words, from the first short film I made, when I did not know very much about making films, uh, it was an intuition first, uh, before maturing into some sort of coherence uh, of some sort. So the intuition was that 
this director has to be in front of the camera. And then why this character, myself, played this way that he did, I think it was also in the beginning purely an intuition. Uh, I don't have any reference to any form of acting. I'm not an actor. Uh, and um, I, I, I don't, I acted like with a, f a film and a friend of mine, but I was terrible when I'm not acting in my own films. Um, it was not, it was more realism than anything. Um, so it starts to become part of um, the aestheticization and, you know, content form sort of uh, um, way. And so the only difference is that um, in the beginning I had a lot more um, very static, almost even f even my physique was also quite static and and um, and uh, much more robotic, let's put it that way. The eyes were completely expressionless without ever blinking. Well, actually, I still don't, don't do that, but... Uh, um, what? Somebody said something? Someone's phoning. Oh, somebody's phoning? Uh, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> no, just in case. Uh, maybe it's for me. <laughs> Uh, and I think what happened is from one film to another there is a little I can see shifting you know I can't see what that shift is but the shifting you know every time I actually I think I was telling this today to someone uh, maybe in an interview that um, like um, especially in this film and uh, in maybe in another couple of films I don't know exactly how this character is supposed to act exactly. I mean, I don't know if this person has to be a little bit more animated or how should the stare be. Uh, uh, so in this film, uh, I realized that there has to be a little, a little haikuish animation. That means a little a little gesture here and there. For example, the last scene, which I shot for about like an hour and a half of just me staring. You know, they just kept on repeating the song and I just kept on looking. Uh, luckily, I was also drinking to sustain myself. Uh, and it was a bar, what can you do? Uh, what do you do in a bar? Uh, so, and I kept on shooting trying to look for my, like trying to um, to have that absolute most minimalist shift in the expression to include the melancholy, the, the hopeful, the, you know, the identifying, the, all of these gestures that I wanted to actually portray um, without uh, signaling, without being, uh, you know, in, in total subtlety, that is. So in order to have that very little, just little move in the face, it was really, you know, a search. And the search, the only way to have done that, to kind of indicate the feeling of this character uh, without verbal language, and to have all the, let's say, expression language, without exaggeration what to actually try try to see how the emotion can bring that over so what i had was you know the music constantly playing and replaying for a long 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 time and me trying to imagine you know how i sh like to get it deeper inside of you and like an actor almost like an actor i'm not an actor but i i did like an actor and so until there was something that was uh, you know, happening at some point, uh, and uh, to give that, you know, because it was an ending, and I really needed absolutely to 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 put that expression on to signify my position in this equation between me and a young generation that sort of you know is. Um, is actually igniting this kind of new form of resistance that I don't particularly 
uh, can share because I am, you know, of another kind of generation and not only that, of a, another kind of, you know, even geography because I no longer uh, live there. I have to tell you just something really silly. I mean, before I start to act in, in these films, I usually stand at the mirror and I start to look at myself and see, you know, how is this guy going to look? And uh, in this one, <laughs> because b long ago I used to have black hair. Uh, now I don't have black hair. And, uh, and I have glasses, I used to not have glasses. And uh, so this time when I was looking at the mirror, I really couldn't believe I really, you know, was going to do this role. I thought, oh my God, this guy is like an old fucking hag, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to do this? It <laughs> it worked in the end somehow. <laughs> A lot of makeup. Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm so sorry. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up here. We have another uh, another movie coming in you. right after. Well, don't send your brother to me, please. Thank you so much for being here. Please, another big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>